Hi, people. Today we have prepared three mini terrariums and Madagascar cockroaches will live in each of them. These are the largest members of their species, about the size of a matchbox. They are also known for hissing in the presence of stimuli to intimidate. This cockroach also has huge spines on its legs, which helps it cling better to surfaces. Unlike the Argentine cockroach, the Madagascar one can climb even on the glass, so it's better to cover them with a lid. So we have three test groups and there are five cockroaches in each. Well, while they arrange a battle between themselves, we have prepared three versions of provisions. Some will be fed with fresh products, others will get spoilt ones, and the third will be fed with what is considered to be unhealthy food. And here is a set of products that we have prepared for cockroaches. In fact, this amount should be enough for a couple of weeks. We cut off a piece of each of them. And prepare Petri dishes. We put the food into them. Now we give them a week to spoil. Using the tomato as an example, we demonstrate how the food will spend this week under some food wrap so that the mold will overcome it as quickly as possible. It's time to start with the first group of products. There is a slice of banana underneath this dark mold. Let's cut it off and see what's inside. The first thing to note is that it is very soft and you can cut it without any effort. And there's a disgusting smell coming from it. It also seems to have several types of mold on it. There's black mold and green mold and even some yellow mold. So for the cockroaches, the choice is going to be great. Unlike the group that gets just a banana. So this fresh banana goes to the first group. Literally immediately one of the cockroaches pounces on it. It eats it slowly but with great appetite. However, the other terrarium inhabitants also quite quickly join the treat. And here is how the first hour of banana eating looks like. In total, this product will be at the disposal of cockroaches for 48 hours. They will eat what they have time to eat and after two days, we will move on to the next one. Now it's time for a bad moldy banana, but they have an appetite for this kind of food too. We haven't expected to see cockroaches eating mold. They like it as much as they like the spoilt banana itself. It is not for nothing that cockroaches live near accumulations of rubbish, and therefore, such food is certainly not squeamish. The only question is how such a diet will affect their health after two weeks of diet from stale. Now it's time to leave both groups for two days. After two days, both bananas have dried up, but visually the good banana is bitten much better than its spoiled counterpart. Although judging by the amount of waste products, both groups of cockroaches have eaten quite well. However, during the cleaning, we notice that the excrement of one and the other group differs greatly in texture and color. The third test group will start their meal with chips. We choose the prettiest one and put it down to the insects. At first, they have been ignoring the product for a long time. They touch it indifferently with their whiskers. However, Soon, one of the cockroaches realizes that this thing can be edible, and it likes it. It's eating it so much that it crunches. Then it lies down on its side, covers with sharp paws, pseudo-potato, and begins to eat. Apparently, it's more fit that way. Then another cockroach comes and also joins the feast. Anyway, they are eating the crisps. After 48 hours of intense eating, there is a small piece left, which is shaped like the letter L. What can it mean? Is it like? Or is it live today? Or is it a like for live today? The chips are pretty dry, they would be glad to have something to drink. 
How about a Coke? Carbonated sugary drinks. That's a nasty thing. But if it's okay for humans, it's okay for cockroaches for sure. We pour the cola into a small container and put it inside the terrarium. And they drink. And absolutely all cockroaches take part. Sometimes they drink one by one. Sometimes they do not hesitate to come up a few at a time. We hope that everyone has quenched their thirst, so we will move on to the next product. Ordinary Jelly Candy is a true champion of coloring agents, flavorings, flavor intensifiers, and other things that are not the most useful for food. But cockroaches, exactly like humans, don't care about that at all. They just want it to taste good. They just attack the food and down it with great appetite. Though when we put the camera on time-lapse and shot the first hour of insects' behavior, we can see that at first they did not show any interest in the candy at all. But for two days, they have eaten the candy quite well. One of the cockroaches continues to eat it. And it should be noted that during this time, the candy has not dried up at all, has not lost its shape or color. The time has not affected it at all. Only the cockroaches. And judging by the amount of fecal masses covering the floor of the cage, the insects have eaten really well. Another disgusting thing that is definitely not better than chips and jelly sweets is processed cheese. We unpack it, cut off a small piece, and send it to the cockroaches. A daredevil literally immediately volunteers and begins to eat. But it doesn't last long. Then other cockroaches start to come up. But they aren't very enthusiastic either. I can't say they like the cheese very much. When we look in the terrarium two days later, the product has completely dried up, and judging by the jaw marks, they haven't been eating it very actively. This cockroach behavior says a lot about processed cheese. Well, while this group of cockroaches has been actively eating all sorts of harmful things, the other two are not lagging behind either. Right after the banana, we've switched to meat. We follow the same scheme. Some eat fresh food, others spoilt one. By the way, the spoiled piece is not only covered with a solid layer of mold, but is also incredibly smelly. We can't say that the cockroaches care. They eat both mold and meat with the same good appetite. Let's leave them for a while. Wow. An hour of time-lapse observation shows that all the cockroaches present in the terrarium have made at least a few bites. Only one cockroach has been tempted by the fresh meat during the hour. The others have been wandering around as if not noticing the food at all. Well, they'll have 48 hours to enjoy it. It's time to see if they've succeeded. In two days, most of the moldy meat has been eaten, and what is left resembles stone in texture. It's as if the cockroaches have extracted all the moisture from it. But a piece of fresh meat has also dried up. But the insects haven't eaten it for some reason. They like stale meat better. Next up, we'll treat them to a juicy pear. There are two, the fresh and the spoilt. We cut off a piece of each and send it to different participants of the experiment for eating. The cockroaches pounce on the fresh pear and start eating or drinking its juice. As a result, everyone has taken part in the meal. Sometimes they eat in turns and even come up three at a time. At some point, an unknown bug joins them and also decides to quench its thirst. Where has it even come from? The spoilt pear is being eaten with no less appetite. It turns out that they like pears in any form. What to say, some cockroaches drink the juice of the rotten fruit right off the floor. Well, a week has passed and we can already make the first observations. The process's cheese has dried and turned to a stone. Apparently, they haven't eaten it very much. And in general, the activity of cockroaches on unhealthy diet has decreased very much. They are passive and prefer to sleep most of the time. There is a small dried piece from the spoilt pear left. The group of cockroaches that eat spoilt food is the least happy with the experiment. They lie and writhe, 
One of them has twisted its stomach so much that it's lying on its back and does not want to turn over at all. But the fresh pear has almost kept its integrity. There are almost no traces of cockroach jaws on it. Apparently, they have been interested only in the juice. So there are no differences in behavior on a healthy diet, unlike the other groups. Well, let's move on. This time we will treat cockroaches with eggs, one of which has been lying in the fridge for a month, especially for such an occasion. We crack both eggs into Petri dishes and pour them into the terrariums. The cockroaches eat the fresh egg, and they do it both one by one and several individuals at once. But the second group does not want to eat the spoiled egg at all. Nevertheless, half an hour has passed, and they start eating it. Eventually, they even stop being embarrassed by the curdled yolk. Now, we remove both groups of cockroaches and move on to the next. We're going to feed these with sauce. We squeeze a little on the floor and wait for the reaction. Mmm, they're eating, and with great appetite. Eventually, almost all the inhabitants of the glass cube have gathered around the sauce drop. Wow, we supposed they would say no. But no, human food in any form is not alien to these insects. After two days, we can see the result. The sauce has dried up a little, but as soon as it becomes clear that this food will soon be removed, one of the cockroaches decides to continue eating. The most interesting thing is that this food or the whole diet has caused a terrible diarrhea in the residents of the terrarium. There are traces of it literally all over the terrarium. Well, we clean up, draw some conclusions and move on to the sausage. We cut off a slice and send it to the insects. As the observation has shown, they also eat sausage very well. However, only one cockroach is involved in this so far, but still they do not disdain such food. Although the next half an hour of observation shows that only the same cockroach has been eating. Let's go back to the cockroaches having eaten the eggs. It's taken a little more than the usual number of days, and each egg has simply dried up. We can conclude from the amount of fecal masses that the cockroaches have eaten the spoilt egg much better than the fresh one. And when we collect the excreta from both groups, the difference is not only in quantity, but also in color and even a little in shape. In general, the differences in the product are quite obvious. Eventually, the mess from the broken egg turns out just incredible. So we temporarily move the cockroaches to another area and bring order to the terrariums. The next product is a tomato fresh and moldy. We put them in their cages and start the observation. This guy immediately checks the spoilt slice of vegetable out, but the fans of healthy fresh food do not also lag behind. In general, both groups eat with enthusiasm, but the fresh one really appeals to the cockroaches. Anyway, after an hour, the preponderance has been obvious. Let's move on to the cockroaches on the unhealthy diet. They seem to be having diarrhea that doesn't stop, although they haven't eaten much sausage. That's probably because it's dried up quickly. This time we're going to offer some instant food. It is obvious to everyone how unhealthy this product is. In this case, we will have mashed potatoes. We throw the powder from the bag into warm water, stir it up, and give a piece of the mass to the insects. They all are eating and in turn, or even simultaneously. During the first hour, the cockroaches have eaten almost all the mash. Then we have gone away for three days because we have a break planned. And when we come back, it turns out that the tomatoes are completely dried up. But before that, they had been eaten almost completely. Only the peel was left. Purely visually fresh tomatoes were eaten better, but that's not the main thing. 
Now we are more interested in how two weeks of such a different diet has affected the condition of the three groups. Throughout the experiment, we have been collecting the excrement of cockroaches, and there's a tremendous difference. You can already see how the stomachs of each group functioned when digesting different quality food. The cockroaches that ate unhealthy food were more likely to suffer from diarrhea. They had unambiguous signs of digestive problems. Judging by the amount of facies, the strongest appetite was observed in cockroaches that ate rotten food. Not for nothing, they're thought to eat out at the trash hill where there's plenty of it. Well, or they have to eat more to get the necessary portion of calories compared to those who eat fresh food. But the most surprising thing is the difference in the physical condition of each group of cockroaches. For example, insects that have had fresh food and proper nutrition have no problem turning over if they are placed upside down. And those that have eaten rotten products cannot show such a skill. They either continue to lie on their backs or make sluggish attempts to stand on their feet, which still fail. By the way, the third group has eaten almost entirely the last treat, but we are interested. Will they be able to roll over? We have to say, they don't do it as easily as cockroaches on fresh food. But nevertheless, the task of getting up on their feet is no problem. The conclusions are drawn. That's it for today. Bye-bye.